good morning hello hello joy hello christine happy new year to you on youtube so welcome happy new year we are streaming live on facebook and youtube this month we may next month even be streaming live on our tiktok channel as well so um good morning judith morning jean it feels like it's been a while for us though to be fair we got people where we got people joining us from scotland worcestershire south lakes hi vena lovely to have you all joining us now the reason why i'm not joining i'm um, live on tiktok today as well is because i need another phone stand i need to dig my old phone out and um get another stand from a different direction because you honestly you should see my desk here it looks fine from where you are but from where i am i've got um two cameras at eye level two monitors i've got a projector here but we haven't got anyone joining us live today um in the classroom so it is just you and i so i've sketched out my snowdrops i am working from a reference image that i got from pixabay um, oh, just to remind you as well, because it's just me on the shop floor, if we get any customers, I will have to go down and serve. So if I go quiet. From Bedford, hi Denise. That's not too far from us, is it, Bedford? I'm sure um, about an hour, an hour and a half's drive. Colours are on the top of the screen on YouTube. On Facebook, you'll have to just rely on me reminding you. Uh, we have ultramarine, lemon yellow, cadmium red, and burnt sienna. And I'm using a uh, watercolour paper that's uh, 300 GSM, not surface. And I think this one's got about 20% cotton rag in it as well. It would be lovely to see you, Denise. I'm not always about because I'm always upstairs, but if you come in the mornings, um, Jackie's here as well. She's much more personable than I am. <laughs> Morning, Laura. I was at Twinwood Festival about five years ago because I was a, a runner-up in the Mr. Vintage finalists of about 2017, 2018. That's Bedford sheer way, isn't it, Bedford? Good morning, Jane. Happy New Year. So some snowdrops today. Right, so the, the important thing is, because we're... Good morning, Ella. Because uh, we're working in um, watercolour, we're going to be relying on the white of the paper for some snow and the snowdrops. Can I just check, can you hear me all right on YouTube? Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Melanie. What a lovely day. So many of you joining us live. It's about 36 of you on, on Facebook. That's really lovely. So I do appreciate you taking your time out uh, to just watch me do a bit of painting. Not much on telly on a Saturday morning, though, is there? Um, let me just check my sound is coming through. Yeah, OK, it is. I can see that. Uh, it's probably because my head wasn't facing the microphone, um, to be honest, um, Joy, on YouTube. I, I'm... The the link, our YouTube link is always in our stories. We post it there. Oh, Ira, you got the, the lurgy. Morning, Diane from Coconut North Hans. Morning, Janet. Morning, Carol. I'm not, I'm not bad, thank you. I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, so if you head to our stories on Facebook or Instagram, our YouTube link will be there. Oh, yeah, the bird song, Ira, is, is ours. It's a, an RSPB recording. We play it all the time during um, demos, but I've probably got it up a bit too high. And I've got to remember to speak into the microphone for YouTube as well. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to work on the background first and then the flowers and hopefully I can do all this in, in well, 40 minutes now because I've been waffling, haven't I? Honestly. So I've got my big wash brush and I'm going to wet 
the paper and go around my drawing. When you're working in, in florals like this, I'm not a botanical artist, but you do need to draw or trace as well as you can because everything hinges on the drawing. Good morning, Jill. Can't be a waffle, Judith. Well, I got more waffle than bird's eye, you know. Sadly, I'm from the, the black country and, and we just enjoy chatting. Never ask us how we are because you'll have to have an hour spare because we'll tell you. My mum, bless her, when she was alive and she used to help out in the shop, it would take ages to serve people because she'd just be chatting and then she'd say, oh, you know, that lady with the thing and the what's it? And I'd go, no, I don't. You do. She's had this and done that and been there and done that. And I, I haven't got a clue. It's, she, my mother had a wonderful knack of finding out about people. But it was just because she didn't stop talking. Just take enough of a breath to listen to what somebody else was saying. Right, so I'm having to wet everything. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Very kind of you for doing that on your day off. I'll bung it 50p onto your wages for next week. Alright, it's drying out in random places at the moment. But the, what I find with the cotton rag, this isn't a full cotton rag. This is about a 20% cotton rag paper that we sell. It's uh, We have our own branded pads of this. Well, not pads, packs. We do it packs of fives and packs of ten sheets. Um, it's not a bad price to say it's got cotton rag content. Uh, we use this in our classes often as well. But it just needs to be wetted a little bit longer to allow for it. Uh, my brush, Judith. Oh, thank, well, thank you, Daisy. That's very kind of you. Um, this is a pointed wash brush. Now, this is a squirrel hair by Proarty, but they do have a non-animal hair alternative. Um, but I've had this for, for years, actually. Look at the point on that. Um, I've been using this two, three, four times a week for many years, two or three years, actually. Um, I started using this as we came out of the pandemic and we started having the classes here. And I'll be mainly using this brush. Um, so I want a darkish background to let the white snowdrops stand out. Uh, I'll do a bit of blue and a bit of burnt sienna. The, the photograph I'm working from, as I say, is from a, a, a site called Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. It is an app as well. And it is a free hosting of images. So they're generally royalty free, copyright free images. And you can get videos and all sorts of things. We, we tend to use them a lot where possible. Um, but the thing we've got to remember is watercolours dry 30% lighter. So we've got to allow for that as we get nearer to our snowdrops. Go with a bit more strength of colour and brown. I don't want it too brown because I've got I've got a snowy bottom. But we'll blend it in. So th th when you're blending with watercolour, it does have to be wet or damp. And this is where I always hope I don't get a customer. Because this is like the crucial bit. <laughs> and I need it to stay wet long enough. If, if I have to go and serve at this point, then it could be tragic. Hi, Valerie. North, North, North Norfolk. Thank you for joining us today. It's really lovely to have your company. Oh, I've gone over me bits a little there. I should be being very careful around my snowdrops. But when you're under time pressure, that's my excuse anyway. Eh? So this is just a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna. 
I'll lighten it a little bit as I get further down towards that snowy line. I was just going to dip my brush in a bit more water. Um, honestly, if you have questions, please ask. I hope you're finding our daily reels useful. Uh, if you have any suggestions, do message us. Oh, I'm still here. It might be your internet that I've gone off from. Hello from Denmark. Hello, Valerie from Denmark. We've got two Valeries. One from North Norfolk, one from Denmark. How lovely. Thank you for joining us. Um, yes, actually, uh, Joy, the, um, these are my own, no, these aren't my own brand of paints today. I'm just using, uh, standard Cotman, Winsor & Newton's Cotman watercolours, because I'm only using a very limited palette, so it's just easier for me to do that today. But my own branded paints would work beautifully for these, because you'd get some lovely granulation in the uh, background here I did toy with the idea and I thought you know what let's just go simple and squeeze it out so everybody can see it from all the all angles thank you Carol thank you Rosemary I'm glad you're um, they are they are fab I, you know the Jackie makes our paints now because I'm far too busy. No, I've, I'd love to make the paints, but I, I really don't have the time because I'm, I'm teaching or singing or both. Um, so Jackie is the paint maker extraordinaire and does a very good job. Better than when I made them, I tell you. All right, I'm just let that go off a little. And dry. Yeah, I think, yeah, running, running YouTube and Facebook simultaneously if you can, if you've got a laptop and a phone or on two screens or split screen, that's a good idea. I am running out of ideas for the reels. So if you've got any burning things, don't put them in here because I won't be able to see them or, or remember them. But if you send us a message about ideals, ide ideas for the reels then that would be wonderful. Oh, 38 of you. Oh, we've got loads of people now. Right, what I want to do is to give the impression that this is a bit snowy. So I've got an old toothbrush. Please make sure it's an old one. Or from somebody you don't like very much. And then I'm just going to dip it into some water and spatter the water. Now, this might be too wet. This might be too wet, not the water. It is a little bit. Do you know, I'm going to be naughty make a little bit of noise and just have the hairdryer on just very quickly to take off excess moisture I don't want this to dry for this snow spattering that might be just right so I'm just going to spatter with water and I did this as a reel actually the other week for a snowy landscape um, we're just spattering snow and can you see how it just Gives that lovely mottled effect. So all that is, is water. Um, you can use salt. I find the, the salt less stable. Um, because you really do have to rely on drying times and all sorts of things with that. But for, for adding spatters, all you have to do is make sure the wetness goes from a high gloss to a sort of satin um sheen and then you can spatter once it goes matte it's too dry and it won't work but i just i just like the idea of the water on there it's lovely isn't it it's a lovely effect and you can see there it really does help bring the petals forward so while that's drying i'll do a little bit of snow I've done all that in 10 minutes good in it I'm such a genius. <laughs> I hope you've all had a good Christmas or Yule or New Year, whatever you've been celebrating, if you've been celebrating. And if you haven't, I hope you've had a nice couple of weeks while we've not done any demos. Uh, 
as that dries, I'll just let you know the next demonstration is the 3rd of February, and that's a snow scene in acrylics. Oh, Denise, you flatter. I am a genius. No, I'm not, but thank you. It's lovely, Jane. I don't think we've done this on a Sunday class, have we? Um, snow spattering. Uh, but it, it it's tricky because you really do have to catch it just at the right time. As with a lot of watercolour techniques, you have to know just... So while I'm looking at this, I'm to know when to spatter, I'm using... I'm moving my head around so I can see how the paint catches the light. And uh, there's an area there that's still very glossy. Um, so it's not ideal for spattering because basically you're adding more water to something that's wet. But as it dries or is drying but not dry... Um, the spatter of water creates those it, it just moves the bit of paint that is still wetter than the surrounding paint which is a bit drier so you get that lovely mottled effect you can do the same with dishwasher salt or rock salt um but for t i don't like it for two reasons one if your painting's too dry it won't work at all if your paint's too wet all it will do is it will create dark halos around the salt um and also you just get loads of salt everywhere um oh denise good i'm glad your mojo is returning um and then you have to brush it off and and you have to wait for it to totally dry before you brush it off because the salt is still got paint on the underside so spattering with water for me is a much better way of working so i'm going to make a sort of purpley gray colour now from oh, for sort of dry brush snow even though I'm going to use my big wash brush uh, go with a bit of ultramarine a bit of cadmium red not too much cadmium red it is a hungry colour and it will eat everything up good Diane get your mojo back we all need we all need a bit of art I, 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 we shared a newspaper article yesterday or the day before about how it's now scientifically proven how beneficial creating art is for our physical and mental health now we've been banging on about that for decades but um it's nice to know medically it people are thinking the same thing as well right so what did you notice what i did there i didn't tell you because i was chatting um I'd got quite a lot of water on my brush, so I just pinched it and squeezed out the excess. So I've got just a little bit, and I'm using the brush more on its edge. And very lightly skimming over, so I'm hitting and missing on the surface of the paper, because watercolour paper, not paper, is very bubbly and lumpy. Were the health benefits ever in doubt? Well, quite. I mean, you know, all they'd have to do is ask us. Uh, and we can say, you know, with the students... We've had students with COPD who need a, an inhaler to get up the stairs. But for the time they're in the class, they forget that they've got a breathing issue and it relaxes them. We've had students with severe anxiety, you know, even my own anxiety. Ooh, paper, uh, Facebook's gone a bit... Facebook, I lost you then for a second. That That was this end, I think, or... Nationally, I don't know. I, I have found the internet in general being a bit naff since the new year. But do you know what? What What is brilliant, Diane? I, I know you're saying you'll never be brilliant, but it, 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 with art, you get out of it what you want to get out of it. We get students in class who are here for the company the fun and the enjoyment um, we get others that come just purely to learn how to paint to improve so it doesn't really matter why you're here and why you take a part whatever benefit you get out of it is the right benefit for you um, well, I sound like I'm on QVC don't I um, it ha it's, it's wonderful Oh, who are, what are you in the panto, Carol? What panto is it and where are you? Let's give you a plug.
came with the dinosaurs. You did not come with the dinosaurs, Rosalie. It is, it is wonderful therapy. I want to leave some of this white paper because otherwise it, it, it becomes a little bit pointless, to be honest, doing all of this if we're just going to paint it all purpley pink. Um, it is calming, isn't it, Libby? Um, I mean, I, I've made no secret about my um, struggles with anxiety and depression over the years. And as an art teacher, I have to say, it helps me as much as it helps you and we get really overwhelmed and happy with the the the, the expressions of joy from you lot and how it uh, helps you on so many ways and i just think that's lovely oh, it kept you saying during lockdown relaxing and enjoy absolutely well this is it you've got um you do meet a lot of like-minded people and what's wonderful about art lessons is it crosses all boundaries we've got people from all backgrounds and all cultures and the unifying factor is the enjoyment of art and that's so enriching you learn so much from all over from you know look how many people from all over the world are here today joining and watching us it's just wonderful is the paper really white or a slight cream shade? Um, it's not bright white. It is quite a white paper, this one. Um, I'll just pull out another sheet from down the side. Um, it is quite white, but you can see compared to the tile, the mixing tile, which is a bright white, um, it's slightly creamy. Um, I'm not a big, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of really white paper, Denise, um, myself, for watercolours. Um, just a personal, personal preference, there's no real reason why. It's harder to find and it's more expensive, so that, that, that probably um, is one of the answer. Right, so I'm going to go with lemon yellow, clean my brush. I'm going to see if I can do most of it with this brush, to be honest. Lemon yellow and a bit of ultramarine. How am I doing for time? 20 past. Start off with more of a yellowy green to start with. And then I can do the stems and tops. And then we'll go in with slightly darker tones. So yeah, it's a snowy scene in acrylics next month. You'll be able to see some good blends. Now you can see because this is a wash brush, it really does hold the paint. But I do know some of you find that quite stressful because it holds too much. It's knowing how how to use these. Because if I put too much pressure down at this point. It's just going to go everywhere. Beauty and the Beast at Darlington Stars. A dame. Comedy role. Called Smell. Sister to Belle. Wonderful. Oh, no, you're not. It is quite nice paper and having that slight cotton content makes it retain the moisture a little bit longer. Just a little bit. So we're going to go darker with this. We've got lots of time. These would make really nice greeting cards. You know, you can do, you know, you just do a couple of snowdrops. And then we've got uh, the pattern inside. Um, do you know what, Joy? I don't think I have got tutorials for using different types of brushes because I don't use that many different types. For watercolours, I generally just use these three and they're, they're getting a bit old now. This is a number two pointed round wash brush. This is a number one miniature painting brush. This is a number four round watercolour brush. And then occasionally I'll add in a 
um, a rigger brush if I need to, but they're basically the only colours, um, the only brushes I use. Snowdrops are the birthday flower, Judith, for um, January, and also for my family, they also have a very special uh, meaning this time of year. Uh, one of my my nephew who was um, born sleeping, oh gosh, 27, 28 years ago, uh, this time of year. So our family emblem for the month is the uh, snowdrop in memory of little baby Ashley. So it's an important flower for us as well. I could do flowers for each month. If I had the time, I'd love to do that, Judith, I would. Um, but I go on the reels, I could do a reel. That's true. I could do the monthly. Yeah, that, that would give me something to do. I could try and do a speed version of it, you know. It's amazing how much information you can convey in a minute. Yeah, give that a go. I'm up for anything, me. Right, let's go a little bit darker for that lovely shape inside let's go a little bit bluer so there, there are several ways you can go darker with watercolors uh, one is just by adding less water and another is by darkening it with another color I'll think I'll definitely think about that then a different uh, the flower for each month just add in a bit more water to the top there this is quite wet um, I don't really want to use too much water on it um, or the hairdryer will I risk it oh I don't know let's wipe my brush I am I'll trouble is I'll turn the hairdryer on and then everything shoots across the room. So I want to add a, a sort of darker green. Never and Diane. Do you know, um, my, my mom would have been 80 this year. In March. Sadly, we lost her eight years ago. Um this year but yeah she would have she would have been 80 so happy birthday diane how wonderful 80s nothing now 80s the new 50. so i'm making a deeper green with ultramarine more ultramarine but what can happen is that the more ultramarine in the green makes this particular mix a bit emerald so you've got two options to knock it back or tone it down and that's either by adding a tiny bit of red or a little bit of brown too much and it will go brown i mean too much red and it will go brown as well but too much brown and it will go brown oh judith's birthday as well So I'm just going to do the darker parts and then blend in with a clean, damp brush. Well, I had my 45th birthday in December. So I've still got quite a way to go. And hopefully I'll still be painting into my 80s. That would be nice. I might switch to a smaller brush in a sec. To do the blend. Thank you, Judith. 
I'll just use a clean damp brush just to soften in this is a number one miniature painting brush I love these these are by Pro Arti as well um, because they've got a really great triangular handle and they're just perfect to hold they really are lovely So a clean damp brush just helps blend things together. And with acrylic brushes, I'm still, uh, Joy, I'm still answering your question half-heartedly. Because um, I, do, I don't use many brushes and the acrylic brushes that I do use are just out of a basic set. So it's not too complicated. We try to keep everything to a minimum a to keep costs down for students because we know how expensive things are um, but also just to make it easier to remember because if you've got hundreds of brushes and hundreds of paints and oh you know remembering what you've got to bring and what you've got to use is quite stressful so if you can reduce that even a little bit then that's good I'm not overly precious about, especially acrylic brushes, I'm not precious about, and I can chat about that next month um, when I'm doing acrylics. Um, for watercolours, I do tend to just like these three. And it's because, you know, I've been, I've been painting for quite a while now many decades and these I found just work the best for the way I paint so a semi outline but not too much it's kind of coming in into shape now isn't it thank you Judith um there's not a lot to left to do in a way and I think I will have to move this wash brush out of the way because it's going to get too wet um, and too tricky. I'm going to let that green dry a fraction. So are you all planning on doing more art this year? Whether it be I by yourself or attending uh, classes or even joining our online classes. We've got all of our classes are available online that we do almost all of them. You can join us live. Uh, we've got Monday evening water-based media, Tuesday afternoon fortnightly acrylics, Tuesday evening drawing and acrylics, Wednesday afternoon drawing, Wednesday morning from March a new drawing class which will hopefully be online as well, Thursday morning pastels, Thursday afternoon watercolours, Friday morning art history, Friday afternoon watercolours, um, Saturday morning calligraphy, Sunday morning watercolours, you name it we do it. Oh, thank you, Jean. So I'm just going to have to do the white petals now and the shading in that. That's an interesting point, Rosemary. And you know what? I agree. Rosemary says, for, for those of you on Facebook, that she finds that the number of brushes she uses for painting is directly linked to how well things are going. If things are going well, she uses fewer brushes. And I can relate to that with, not so much with watercolour, but definitely with acrylics and oils. I will use a lot more brushes if I'm getting stressful. And I'll say, oh, I need another brush. And then if your brush gets soggy and you don't want it soggy and you haven't got time to dry it and you're getting stressed about drying it. Yeah, I, I get you, Rosemary. I, I, I get that. Absolutely. So I'm going to mix. I've got a bit of space on my tile. I'm quite a tidy painter. It's the only time in my life I'm tidy. Um, ultramarine. This is for the shadow on the petals. That'd be lovely, Jane, yes. Um, uh, to be honest, that's why we don't do courses here and all of our classes are standalone. Because it does mean you can try everything. I had a student last year or the year before that had two weeks where they came to every class 
they did watercolours, acrylics, drawing, and then they decided what they like um, or what they didn't like. And then they honed down and uh, took it from there. Do you know, I've missed a bit of green out, obviously, because I'm looking at the photo not clearly, not often enough. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'll go with my number four round. I'll start on this side now because I've wet that bit. And I want the petals to remain as white as I can, but in the photograph, the light is coming from this way. So I'm going to wet. Well, I say wet. I, I'm going to say wet, but really it's more of a damp. Um that petal and then I'm going to go in with this bluey grey shadow mix there like that and because the paper's wet it'll soften the edge and I can blend it upwards and I'll do the same with this petal I don't want too much water and I still want it to be oh thank you Carol you need a kick in the pants, Valerie, to get started again. Unfortunately, we don't provide that service, but maybe we should. It, it is interesting, because, Rosemary, you do the water-based, the drawing and the acrylic classes, don't you? And it's amazing, especially if we, when we do skill builder sessions, we have the same reference for all of the skill builders. So if you did a skill builder in watercolour, a skill builder... Uh, like this week we did crowds so the drawing class the acrylic class and the watercolor class all use the same reference and it's fascinating to see how the same image looks in a different medium i love that i'm afraid that's one of my things that i snuck in because i just enjoy that myself and just remember that you can always lift off the colour again once you've put it on if you think oh that's too like that too strong yes it will dry lighter but I can just use a clean damp brush lift it off I mean snowdrops are quite delicate anyway aren't they but you can try several petals at the same time but that will really depend on your speed as I say, this is more aesthetic than botanical. I'm not a botanical painter. Um, but the techniques are still the same. You're just using a lot more time and a lot smaller brushes. And mainly opaque watercolours. If you're doing a lot of florals, you might find using opaque paints the way forward. Um, and if you've watched our reels, you'll know that the way to find that out is from the paint tubes and they will either tell you or have a uh, square on them and the square is either clear if it's a clear square then it's transparent if it's got a clear square with a line diagonal line through it then it's semi-transparent if it's a half clear square and a half black square then it's semi-opaque and if it's a fully black square then it is opaque but you might find nipping online and finding the um, colour charts from the relative companies um, they will tell you all of that information as well because you do tend to want more transparency in florals because it gives a lovely glowy effect in watercolour particularly However, in Cotman, they're all more transparent um, regardless, just because of the pigment used. But they're still very light fast. So this paint, this painting that I'm doing will, will still last on a wall for a good 80, 100 years, even though this is the Cotman student paint. There's a lot of misconception about Cotman. And it's because people forget that paint changes uh, paint manufacturers have honed their manufacturing over the decades so whilst yes it wasn't the best paint 30 years ago 
do you know what? It's actually really quite good now. Same for acrylics, System 3 acrylics and, and, and what have you. Are fairly light fast. Obviously not as light fast as artist quality. But it will depend on your budget. Um, always get the best you can afford. But I would never say go into debt for your art. Especially with how the world is at the moment. Or you can buy our watercolours, our handmade half pan sets. Um, I think we're going to have to put the price up slightly to about £35 for 12 um, And they're lovely. They are really lovely paints. And they are handmade on the premises by the lovely Jackie. Oh, Diane. Oh, Libby. This is actually on a, it's on A4 paper, um, Ira. Thank you, Carol. Um, so, yeah, it's A4 paper. It's just missing off on Facebook because I couldn't get the, um, the separate stand any higher. Um, I'm going to have to outline a few of these petals, which I didn't really want to do. And that's mainly down to me not looking at what I'm doing. with the ridges and the petals I can see there is someone browsing in the shop so I might have to go down or as I'm nearly done here we might be able to work yeah you could do it on a card absolutely thank you I'm nearly finished Amanda I'm nearly done but thank you for joining us anyway. If you really did get too over the top with your um, shading, you could always use a bit of white gouache um, to reaffirm some of it again. I'll just go back into my snow shadow colour. feels like they're in a bit more deeper snow maybe and we'll call it a day I think thank you so much for your company it's been wonderful to be back and um, oh my paints are better than the Schminky Academy paints thank you Joy that's something worth um, us bragging about um, so if you do try this please pop it in the comments because I would absolutely love to see what you do um, I'll take a photograph of this after the demo and uh, post it in this uh, in the comments section so you can see and save it so you can try yourself later on. But four colours, it's a lovely exercise to try. So thank you so much for your company. And as I say, the next demo is the 3rd of February and it's a snowy scene in acrylics. So I'll see you there if I don't see you before. So take care. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.